In the first video, we looked at some nerve theory. In this video, I'm going to start applying that theory to the nerve for the lower limb. The nerve supply in the lower limb originate from nerve roots L1 to F3. Fibers from these nerve roots will head out to form lumbar and sacral plexuses, and we can group them together as the lumbo sacral plexus. We'll then have peripheral nerves that travel out into the limb. Now for this video, I'm not going to worry about the details of which nerve roots end up in which peripheral nerves. Instead, I'd like to run through the myotomes and dermatomes that they ultimately supply. A dermatome is the area of skin supplied by a single nerve root. Now there are a few different dermatome maps you can find, but for this video, I'll be using Forster's version and drawing them onto this illustration here, which you can download from the links below. Broadly speaking, the dermatomes start by traveling down the anterior aspect of the limb and then traveling back up the posterior aspect. So if we start with L1 on the lower abdomen, then the next dermatome we meet will be L2 on the anterior thigh. L2 will also pass laterally to have a small supply on the posterior aspect. L3 is found over the knee and is separated from L2 by this long diagonal border. L4 supplies skin on the medial leg, whilst L5 supplies the anterolateral leg as well as most of the dorsal foot. The sacral nerves start with F1 innervating the lateral aspect of the foot, the majority of the sole, and the heel. F2 provides sensation to nearly all of the posterior limb, although small portions of the anterior dermatome can be seen at its lateral and medial borders. Finally, F3 innervates skin over the gluteal region. If a nerve root gets damaged, you'd expect to see lost or altered sensation across the entirety of its dermatome. However, it's worth remembering that although these areas are fairly well defined, there is some crossover between nerve roots at the margins of these areas. So for example, if L3 was damaged, we'd expect to lose sensation across this entire area. But it might still receive some sensation at its borders from neighbouring nerve roots. So if you're examining the dermatome, make sure to test sensation near the centre of these areas to ensure you've isolated a single nerve root. The myotome for all of the muscles and parts thereof that are innervated by a single nerve root. These are harder to draw out as they tend not to be associated with regions, but with movement. So instead we're going to add them to this illustration that shows flexion and extension at the major joints. And as always, you can download this image from the links below. Generally, the upper nerve roots control anterior movements of the limb, whilst the lower nerve roots control posterior movements. So hip flexion is part of the L2 and L3 myotomes, knee extension is controlled by L3 and 4, and ankle extension is part of the L4 and 5 myotomes. Posteriorly, we have a similar distribution of myotomes, just starting two nerve roots further down. So hip extension is controlled by L4 and 5, L5 and F1 control knee flexion, and ankle flexion is part of the F1 to 2 myotomes. So what does this mean for nerve root injuries? Well, all of these movements are part of two myotomes, so if that nerve root gets injured, the movement may become weaker, but shouldn't be completely lost. For example, if L3 was damaged, then hip flexion and knee extension would both be affected. However, fiber from L2 and L4 would ensure those movements could still occur, just with less power. Remember, if a nerve root gets injured, then both its dermatome and its myotome should be affected. In the next video, we'll have a look at the peripheral nerves in the lower limb. But until then, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.